I'm gonna let you roll any die. This one's odds, this one's evens. Which boat gets a random knot coming loose? That would be an eight. So, number two has two knots. So you managed to untie a knot and you didn't even try. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Welcome back to Die Inspired Season 1. Last time we met some of our wandering Seder crew, and today we're going to meet the rest and see if there's anyone who can take command in the chaos. Let's see where the dice take us. I haven't lived 400 years to go out like a <laughs> chump. Sorry. <laughs> and I'd like to make a stealth check against their passive perception to stow myself away on the lifeboat, if possible. So that's going to be that's that's going to be in plain sight. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's going, it's going to be high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll. If, do, you'll, if you'll let me do I'll it. I'll let you do it. It's going to be at disadvantage because it's in plain okay. sight. Okay. They're on two natural 20s and they just watch you disappear. Yeah. First one's 14 plus 6, dirty 20. Uh, 3 plus 6, 9. Dang it. Yeah. yeah, there's not really much space. 165 or 195 as you try uh, and hide in the boat. 195. Okay. Varen looks like he's trying to sneak kind of under the boat, and you're all just kind of looking at him like... I'm, I'm getting the knot, guys. Don't I worry. I just look at him and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Friends cantrip. <laughs> Desmond will call out, fear will slay your mind, and cowards have no place on this ship. Throw them overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Someone yells, Port side, hold on to something, as another wave comes crashing over the ship. Hey, I'm John, and my character's name is Dreg. Uh, Dreg stumbles a little bit and goes, what, what just happened? Oh, what? And he's going to turn and try to make his way towards the crates, and go, I'm going to figure out and just dash it to the crates. 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. You want to go here? 1, 1, 35. All right. The warning bell rings out rapidly, and with a dull thud, it stops. Uh, Jazz Silverflame, and I'm in cybersecurity. Jazz is a excommunicated seafaring half elf cleric. I quickly glance up at the sky. I say, "Not today, you cheeky bastard!" And I start running towards the the crow's nest to unfasten the barbarian. <laughs> Jazz, she had the right idea. Wrong execution. Let's link up. All right, I, uh, I appreciate the attempt. And, you know, you're very good at grounding yourself, but today's maybe not the best time. So that's a move. Um, and then I'll make a, I'll make a dex check to undo some of the roping. It won't be high because her it's partially tied. Yeah. All right. I'm not so intelligent, uh, but I tried. Two. So you, so she is struggling to get the rope tied around the mast, and then you're trying to catch it. I tighten. And you, you're chasing around the rope as she's trying to swirl it around the mast. You guys oh, gosh, what a mess. are having a tough time with this rope, but it's to be expected because the waves and the wind and it's wet. You hear wood crack and splinter as another spike of black glassy obsidian punctures the stern of the ship, ripping through it. This is some sort of magic. Meanwhile, we're trying to untie knots and failing. My name is Corey Lopriori. My character is Oren Whitestag. Um, I also fail from the, the initial shock of it, so I'll have to use half my movement to get up. If this barrel uh, next to seven is empty, I'd like to just try to lash myself to it. This one here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, right. You, you kind of grab it, shake it, and it feels like it's it's empty. Great. I'd like to try to secure myself to it. Okay. Give me a either a uh, thieves tools to use a rope or a dex check. It'll be dex. Uh, it'll be 20, not natural. Dirty 20. 20 on your dex. Dex check. Yes, you tie sir. yourself to the to this barrel. So you, okay, so you got tied to the barrel, and you're just holding on to the rope. Just holding on to the rope right here. A barrel of oil smashes against the handrail. The flame from an oil lamp catches with a huge flash of fire. My character's name is Desmond of the Shattered Moon. My name is Ben Ramos. I run Land of Far, which is a tabletop role-playing game in bars. All right, so uh, Desmond, having served in His Majesty's Army, understands the importance of leadership and heroism. He pulls a bell from his pouch and begins ringing it, calling out, Delilah, my horse, now! And then he calls out, Break off the grates to the cargo holds. Those will float. We can secure them further. The dinghies now. And then I'll move to... 
from I'm number six, I'll start dashing to 95 as my goal point, and I will be ringing my bell for warning. And hopefully my groom and steward and squire will heal it, hear it from below deck and bring my horse up. Okay. So you have a horse. <laughs> you're damn right I do. <laughs> 30, so you're dashing. Yes. And as part of my movement, I'm going to be ringing my bell in a constant clangor. So my uh, retainers won't act in a combat situation, but they will act to assist me in um, situations where they're also in harm. Would they be able to act and begin readying the horse to come above deck? Yeah. Cool. Uh, when they arrive, I'll tell my squire to raise the banner of the Shattered Moon. Okay, he, he's got, where's the, where's the banner? <laughs> this, the ship's going down. It's I in your know, pouch. Anybody, anybody know where I put they the damn banner? They need a symbol, oh, we're, all gonna, we're all gonna die. Not today. But not without this banner. <laughs> the horse is not going on the lifeboat. Uh, the horse will take up Neither two squares. Neither is that squares. guy, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Ben. My character is Octato the Zephyr. Uh, I'm a candy maker, author, and illustrator. As the ship leans further to port, a shipmate loses their footing, slamming into the handrail too hard for anyone to survive. There's nothing I can do for the guy, so I'm just going to pull my dagger and start cutting the rope tying the, the netted cargo to the deck. The one that's uh, right by me, you said there's one on the side, uh, one on each side yeah. and one on each corner. Yep, so right where you're at. Yep, player so. Player 13 offer assistance. Yes. Yeah. So, he, so uh, player 13 can cut the rope on the opposite side of me. Well, he offered you assistance. So in this situation, he, he, he's granted you advantage. Not to say, I'm, I'm slicing the rope. Yeah, so technically this is an attack. Yeah, okay. So the DC will stay the same. Okay, that's going to be an 11. That hits, so do damage to the rope. All right. Requires five points of damage to cut a rope. Uh, that is six. All right. Nice. Well, you can roll again, see if you crit. Uh, no, it's not a crit, but it still hits, so. Okay, cool. All right, so you cut one of those ropes free. The net kind of starts flopping around in the wind. So my name is David Booth, and I'm playing Sunda. My character is a forester. A crash of thunder explodes in the sky without the flash of lightning. Not everyone's going to make it off this boat, but if we can get this dinghy in the water, it's our best chance. I'm going to try to cut one of the ropes. Okay. You are... Uh, sorry, untie. Okay, you're going to try and untie one of those ropes? Dex check. Okay. Uh, 24. So, boat two now has three ropes that have been untied. You still have a move action. I'll just yeah. move to the back of the boat to 164. Okay. The jib at the bow of the ship snaps and is folded up as an awkward wave seems to be almost prying it up towards the sky. I'm Alexander Moore. I'll be playing Alubin Seastride. I bartend and work with uh, Land Afar, tabletop role-playing game made for groups and bar settings. Alubin had been perched over the rail, looking out wistfully across the sea, his favorite uh, land to serve as a druid. And as the ship hurls and he's tumbled about, and the Wilhelm scream of the sailor with its legs taken about, and the chaos as everybody's falling, he looks over and says, Hey guys, I think something's wrong with the ship. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, begin, he spies his uh, companions first and follows the rallying call of the bell and says, Right, that seems like a good idea. And he starts trotting that way, avoiding whatever mishaps can occur. Um, so he'll move. Well, so you're all the way over here. You're going where? Uh, basically seven squares to the left. I think it puts me at 244. And then as I move about, can I do a perception check to see if there are any um, animal, like sea critters in the area? Maybe some friendly porpoises or sea turtles? Give me a perception. Don't mind if I do. Lashing sea, sea turtles together. <laughs> sea turtles, mate. That is a 12. 12. The, the, dark, the dark waters and the churning waves, uh, if there is anything close enough to the surface to be able to, to be seen, you, you can't spot it. I will just continue moving towards the rallying leader of Desmond. Ropes snap and the sail above your head comes free, blowing out of sight. My name is Hannah and my character name is Mary. So I'm near the boat that has three ties undone, so I'm gonna try to untie the last, the All last right. one. It's an 18. 18. So, boat, lifeboat number two is free. And being last to go, you can just grab that thing. You just 
Like, let's get the heck out of here. No. Hi, uh, I'm Rachel. My character name is Jack. The deck planks under your feet shiver like something is angrily shaking the wandering satyr. <laughs> it's Desmond's <laughs> face. His name's his name's Moonwiper. Okay, so question. I know there's stairs right next to me, but I'm hoping that I may could possibly get to the other boat. This one? Yeah. I have thirty five feet. I know I can't get there if I use the stairs. I was hoping I might be able to jump over. This is thirty five. Oh, okay. You're one square away. Come on. Okay. So, so, so I couldn't have hopped over the railing and done that? You could, but there's a chance of failure with that. That is an option. Look, man! Hey, I get it. I'm, I'm I don't, there. Worst case scenario, you die. It's a DC, DC 10. Because of the rocking ship sure. and, the, and the water, it's DC Next. 10. Uh, acrobatics or? Either acrobatics or, or athletics for this. Uh, acrobatics 12. 15. 15. DC's 10. So you very gracefully... <laughs> Front jump, <laughs> jump down. You look cool doing it. Too. Yeah, man. I'm cool as heck. So five, <laughs> 10, 15, no, 20, 25, knees, 30, <laughs> 35. Yeah. Which will give you, you, because it's in these two squares, so you do, you are close enough okay. to manipulate one of the ropes. Cool. Okay. I'm going to say move over, and then I'm going to try and untie the boat. Did you Sorry, see that jump? Go. That was cool. <laughs> Shh, it's fine. Uh, so it's a natural 16. There we go. So. Good answer. Good Thanks. You said, no, is it a, sorry, dex check. 19 total. 19? Okay. So, lifeboat number one now has two ropes that are no longer tied down. People are attaching themselves to barrels. We should attach those to the boats that we still have locomotion as well as flotation. Absolutely. Make, make like a big... <laughs> Make a big platform of a uh, of flotsam. I'm just a fighter. <laughs> Alright, so that was fun. That, that was a good first round. Yeah. Who's ready to die? Now the end.